I found the baby stoat that's been lost. She would be normally in a litter, maybe six, seven, eight. Giving her milk when she was tiny it was a really delicate operation. Very yeah, wobbly. She just got one eye open, so that indicates she's five weeks old. As you can see, she's got a really fat little tummy there. So she's got her own little sleeping bag in here, and she's going to be nice and cosy in there. Whispers coming on really well, just going really fast now. All right, it's time for a bigger enclosure for her. She'll come out and she's going to have a whole new little world to explore in there. There we go, she's getting braver. The main thing it likes is a human company. And that's something that we've got to change. I feel a little bit sorry for her in a way that she's not got any playmates yet. We're always on the lookout for another stoke kit that's been lost and if we find one we'll do everything we can to get them together. Someone contacted me from Norfolk. They found a baby stoat in their garden. And with a few phone calls and a bit of driving, they've actually got the baby stoat here. So there we are, exactly the same age as Whisper. This one's quite shy. And it's called Stuart. Stuart's a girl. And I'm gonna pop her in uh, now with Whisper and we'll see what happens. Neither of these have seen the stoat before because we were both found with their eyes closed. So this is going to be a really exciting moment. Here comes Stuart just having a little look out and we've got Whisper exploring around the back. I'm sure this is going to work. Yeah, it's just calming down a bit now. So this is it, they've been in there less than half an hour together and uh, we've got them playing. They've realised they've got a playmate now, <laughs> which is just superb. They're getting really active now, they're climbing, they're fighting, they're playing. They're really ready for the next part of their development, which is going outside into the release enclosure. Right, that's it, we've got two uh, Two stoves in here now and we're just going to walk out to the uh, enclosure. So I'm going to put the stoves into the nest here but they've got loads of places to explore here. We've got the dry stone wall here. So we've got a little nose poking out here so they're really raring to go. Stuart was cautious, just popping her head out of the wall, sniffing at the air. Whereas Whisper's much more confident, straight out exploring a new enclosure. Over the next few days, they became more and more confident and started playing in this enclosure, which was just fabulous to see. It was great to see some rivalry between the two kits. Whisper had some food, and a hungry Stuart tried stealing it. I even built them a pond. It was absolutely brilliant watching them swim around, playing and fighting in the pond. And now I'm pretty confident they're ready for their next stage, which is life in the wild. Stuart was first to appear, sniffing around at the entrance. Eventually, she takes her first cautious steps into the wild. Whisper and Stuart stayed in and around the enclosure for about a week, before setting off for their new life in the wild. It's been an amazing experience being part of these young stoats' lives, and I look forward to catching up with them in the future. Shelby would be the surrogate mom. He felt very safe and comfortable around her from the start. When we took Levi in, he was actually thought to be terminal and we thought he might be a phosphorus case. Quite a little squally mess, huh? Quite very popular. No bony back. He was very tiny, very frail, slept almost all the time. It turns out he was just malnourished and smaller than an eight week old kitten. Shelby's 125 pounds and he was a pound and a half. She was just kind of fascinated with him. She was always the one that was 
most present and the most engaged with them. We were feeding him every couple of hours and a lot of pampering and attention. Look at your little bath, little baby Yoda. Your skin is getting so much better. Come on. He went from this little one and a half pound frail thing to a very vigorous, beautiful, healthy Frenchie puppy. Shelby taught Levi how to play with other dogs, how to get along with other dogs. They play what we call bitey face. When he was biting down, she wouldn't necessarily get up and leave or get a little more rough. She would just put her big head on his body and flatten him just enough to make it so he couldn't bite her for a minute. Shelby's a critical part of the process. They're learning valuable social skills. And Levi went into a home with two pit bulls and it was a very easy transition for him. He's got a really big dog personality and he's not intimidated at all. In the beginning, they really didn't want to have a lot to do with him because he was so tiny. But his huge personality, his unwillingness to admit that he's small, won him over in the end. I think he's brought a whole new perspective into our house. Just with his tenacity and positive attitude, it's hard to even describe how excited he is for everything. What did you do? You stinker! Oh my god! <laughs> you remember your friend? There's just something about him that's so special because he was such an incredibly tough case to begin with. Just to see him growing and thriving when it was never expected was a great thing. So scared. You okay? You okay? He was very, very small and frail. His mother had fallen and he was the only survivor. Nearby rehabbers weren't able to help. Once I picked up Butter, it was pretty clear that he just needed help right now. It was pretty dire, so I just took him straight home. He responded in such a positive way. I could tell that he was going to survive after just a few days because he was very, very much a fighter. Feeling good today, playing. Oh, he's so handsome. I was fed him and fed him and he got bigger and bigger and fatter and fatter but he also had bonded to me almost immediately. He will follow me around the house like a little tiny dog. When they bond in that way, it's really difficult to find a way to make them wild. It was my intention to release him. So once he was able to walk, I started taking him outside every day and putting him in trees and bushes and letting him climb and explore. But didn't matter how much time he spent outside, he would run after me back into the house. He would climb right back up into my lap. He was not going anywhere. So Butter decided he was staying and he didn't really give me much of a choice. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, hi. He is a complete love bug. It's like having a living, breathing stuffed animal with pointy, pointy fangs. <laughs> Opossums show affection by a behavior called slubbing. What that is, is he rubs all over my feet, my legs, my hands. They've never felt more loved or more wet. 
When I am asleep, it is my face. I wake up with a hairdo you could not possibly imagine. 3 a.m., my new life. It's amazing because he is so loving. He wants hugs, he wants to be held, he likes to kiss you all over. It's bizarre, it's ridiculous. I feel really happy and relieved that I could help him live a life that he wouldn't have otherwise gotten to live. He's not going to be out living a life of a wild animal, but he's going to live a happy life as long as he lives. Oh, hi. You just need a hug? What is it? The first couple of days, he was kind of scared of her. She was so tiny and outgoing and charismatic. She wanted to play with him all the time, but he didn't know that he could be a puppy. She just kept at him. She would nip at his feet all the time. She would nip at his tail. She would pull it sometimes and bark. She would just keep barking, keep barking until he recognized her. The first time that he like ran with her and figured out that she would chase him, it was on then. He figured out that he could be interactive with her. When she didn't want to share a toy, he was super gentle anyway. As if he knew that he was supposed to be gentle with her and that she was tiny. She brought out the puppy inside him that he didn't know that he could be. They figured out she could get under the bed and hide from the dozer. She'll make noise. And then that creates this, what is under the bed? And then he wants to try to find her. And so it's a whole game of hide and seek. I get questions about, is it really as crazy at your house? 50% of the time it is because of days. She's super active. She loves her red mixing bowl, of course, and I've gotten lots of questions on, is this some type of special dog bowl? No, it's just a red mixing bowl. She is off the walls with it, pushing it around all the time. She's not a cuddler. She doesn't like to cuddle. She loves to play, and that's kind of her love language. Dozer loves to play with her, but Daisy has so much more energy, and we talked about it, but why don't we just add another small one so that she has somebody with her own energy level? And we <laughs> brought Mocha home. She loved her from the very first. I bet they play and wrestle and run and chase each other two or three hours a day. It's incredible. I mean, they're just all the time just going at it. We are glad that we got her, her own tiny sister. It's been so unique and so heartwarming to see. tip over really easily because he had this great big head he had to hold up. That was the stumbling block for him was this large head and taking his first steps. Casper was abandoned rather because his mother was startled mid-hibernation by a piece of logging equipment. He was a good solid little bear cub. So when baby bears are learning to walk, first of all they start to crawl. We'd put them on the floor. We called it tummy time, like with human babies. And then he started to try and stand on his feet, maybe very shaky and tip over. And then that progressed to being able to actually stand for a moment. And then he would take one step and then fall. One day he took a few steps and didn't fall. And then we introduced Casper and Dudley together, but Casper was having none of it. He did not have any interest in, in becoming
becoming friends with Dudley. And Dudley was bringing his toys over and his blanket over and, and kind of presenting them to Casper, saying, hey, come on, let's play. They do about 15 minutes at a time. And then we put Casper outside a few days before Dudley. And he'd been inside then his whole life, took these tentative first steps, and then he bolted. He just he didn't know what to do. It was a whole new experience. There was no roof, there was no, you know, there was the wind, and there was birds, and fresh air, and sunshine. So he was like a kid in a playground. He went around that whole enclosure sniffing things. He was cool and, you know, had a little sniff, and he fell in his pool by mistake. And then we put Dudley in about a week after Casper, and one day we looked on the on our cameras and we saw them wrestling and playing. After that, they were never apart. Swimming is one of their favorite things to do. Bears absolutely love water. Bears don't need to be taught how to climb. Almost as soon as they can walk, they're trying to climb. They would instantly go to our largest tree and go as high as they could go. They loved it. And they're sitting up in the treetop, you know, swaying a little bit in the breeze. Casper and Dudley were released together because they were so bonded. And we opened that door and out they went. And Casper had one little glance back over his shoulder. Dudley was already gone running and Casper ran after Dudley and that was the last we saw of him. I went to this little local livestock auction, saved one animal's life. The calves came out first. And here's this little baby. He just got pulled from his mom. He ended up being the littlest calf of the whole night. No one bid on him. And so I bid on him for $10. And I literally could carry him out in my arms. It was chilly that night. And so we ended up walking into the house. Colton's dog bed was there. And this little baby calf he ends up going over and laying on Colton's dog bed. And he falls asleep right in my kitchen. It was just unbelievable. The next day, he ended up being almost exactly the same size as Colton, my dog, and it was still chilly, so I ended up taking one of Colton's jackets and put it on bucket, and I mean, they literally were the exact same size. Colton connected right with Bucket, and in my mind, I didn't know, like, oh, should I put my dog with my calf? Because I didn't know if that was a normal thing. I had no experience with that. Yeah. And so I just took a chance and just put them together, and then it was like two peas in a pod. They just walked around together, then all of a sudden I saw them starting to run together. And then they were playing together. At one point I was just like, I'm just gonna let this friendship be because they wanted to be together and it was just the cutest thing in the world. Obviously Bucket's gonna grow. I mean, he's gonna be a big steer. And it was like, okay, he keeps getting bigger and Colton is not gonna obviously get any bigger. I always supervise them together. But luckily as Bucket grew, their play didn't change really. And Bucket was very conscious of his size at that point but now he's it's over a thousand pounds. As he's getting bigger, he started doing this kneeling down thing. Like it was to get down to her level. And so he would kneel down, butt in the air, and then they would continue to play. It was just the cutest thing by the fact that you felt like he was adjusting to her size. Bucket is no different than Colton from a personality standpoint. It's just like your pet. I can call Bucket in the field and he will come over. And come say hi. Hi, Bucket. And it's the best feeling. Oh, my boy. Hi. My dream of having a sanctuary, I made it real. Obviously, Bucket was a huge piece of the puzzle. And now 
um, little buckets, Farm Sanctuary, all because of my little guy. When I got up in the morning, I would open the door and his face would be right there. I know, baby. I got no patience. I see you. Okay? His mom was hit by a car and he was laying in the road. Um, and I couldn't leave him there. It was hot. He was dehydrated. Um, I just went and picked him up and brought him home. He kind of bonded to me quickly, but I didn't expect him to be so affectionate. Hey, is super sweet and very loving. You are not supposed to be in here. I love you too, but you gotta go. You can't stay in the house. I wanted him to be used to being outside. He stayed on the porch like almost all the time. Rocky definitely took to him and they became big buddies. Bushes and popping out at... Get it, get it buddy. Okay. I see you handsome guys out here. Handsome boys out here. Rocky would follow Copper some, but more than anything, it was Copper following Rocky. Copper was Rocky's little tiny shadow. He's actually getting old enough now that he's about to lose his baby spots. As he got older, he was here every day. <laughs> You see that knot right there? And that other knot? You know what those are? Those are his buttons, where he'll eventually have antlers. Right there, you see that? After like eight months of him just always being there, I kind of just expected him to be there every day. <laughs> and then there was a day where he didn't come back. I wasn't concerned because he was getting a little older. Oh, did you find a friend? You found another deer, huh, buddy? He came back the next day, you know, and I was like, okay, cool. And then he didn't leave for a while. There he is, so he's doing good. Where'd you go, buddy? You know how to survive, don't you? He got a little more independent. Well, good morning, dude. Hey, buddy. He's afraid of everyone but me. He has seen my husband and my kids his entire life, and he still runs from all of them, which I'm glad of. I didn't want to desensitize him. Because he's afraid. See, there you go. See, no, he ain't gonna have it. <laughs> You're getting so big. Look how handsome. When he got older, he was there always in the mornings, and then he was gone for most all the day after that. Hey, buddy, where you been? What's up, dude? Your button's getting so big, buddy, they're gonna touch the moon. You know, I started keeping up with his uh, buttons, like, yesterday or the day before. They are already bigger. I can't keep up with it, Copper. They all just, the days just run together. Guys, somebody said his little nubbins make him look like a giraffe, and now I can't unsee it. Guys, Copper's got a little cookie in his nubbin and it's so cute. Then he got to where he would be gone for a, a day or two. What are you doing, dude? My goodness gracious. Hey dude, I was looking for you this morning. Ooh, buddy. You're getting some shape. Y'all, his nubbins are so big that it just looks funny at this point. <laughs> yeah, they're a little, I think they're a little bit taller, but they're starting to curve in. Check it out. We got a tiny bit of antler coming through right there. It's gonna be the most handsome buck in the woods. Look who decided to come visit me. Hi. Hi, big baby. I sure did miss you, buddy. And uh, he's been doing a lot. Look at this, you're almost done, buddy. That's so nice. You look bigger. 
than you did when you left. Look at him. He looks like a big old man, you guys. I did mark his antlers. People around the area that we know that hunt, we told them about it. So this is like a small town kind of thing. Everybody knows everybody. The people around here will respect the fact that he's marked. Guys, Copper's been gone for a couple of days and he just got home. Hi, buddy. Did you have a nice trip? I missed you. It's actually been rutting season, which is mating season for deer. He's been gone for a little over a month now, actually. But people have seen him, so I know it's okay. I saw Copper last night. I was driving home, and he was in a field. And yes, I know it was him. And he looked great. Thriving. I do wish, you know, he would come back just for me. But I'm happy that he is out living his best life. I've seen him with other deer. I know he's doing good, and I, that makes me happy. We went to rehome four big cats, and we did not expect Dash. His eyes were still closed, his ears were folded down. He was just teeny. There's my boy. He couldn't weigh more than about three, three and a half pounds. Dash was very vocal. He did have tantrum noises. You're so mad. That sounded like a pterodactyl screaming. His life would have been confined to a cage in a roadside zoo or a cub petting operation. So we're thrilled here at the sanctuary that Dash gets to make his own choices. Dash's eyes are just starting to open. Pretty soon we're gonna see those baby blues. Week two, he was a really happy tiger cub. Well, you're four pounds, two ounces. He was starting to roll over. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> are you trying to roll over? I see you. By week three, Dash went from crawling to walking. Look it, you're walking. <laughs> <laughs> he had almost doubled in size. Over here, Dash. As he grew and the weeks went on, that little apex predator and training surfaced. His ears were starting to pop up. His eyes were wide open now. Dash had a tiger toy stuffed animal that he was smaller than and cuddled him. And now he towers over this little stuffed toy. When he was hitting the seven week mark, everything was about playing. Dash would start finding paper towel rolls. He would also tip over his water bowl or just step in it. That's when Dash started getting Dash the Destroyer as his nickname. We had to really stay on our toes. Week eight is when he was moving into his big boy room. He was over 20 pounds. Well, every couple days he was adding a pound. Yeah. Back up. The polka dot pig he stole from my dog. He started seeing everything as prey. Everything is prey practice. And how do I tear it apart? Where do I drag it? How do I destroy it? <laughs> the rest is stock. Stealthy tiger in play mode. <laughs> Dash is going to get to explore the outside for the first time ever. He came through the chute. He didn't miss a beat. He climbed his perches. He scratched his logs right away. Today, outdoors is his favorite. He loves the snow. Dash doesn't even look like the same cat. He still has so many things to experience at the sanctuary. He's very proud of all he accomplishes. Oh, that's a big climb, Mr. Dash. He finds joy in everything. And he's a happy, independent tiger.